Welcome back to HackCode. In this video, we'll walk through an important problem for coding interviews, coin change from Litecode. This problem revolves around finding the minimum number of coins needed to make up certain amount using the given set of coin denominations. This problem is crucial for developing dynamic programming skills, which are key to solving optimization-based challenges. We'll discuss three approaches, brute force, top-down, and bottom-up. So sit back, relax, and let's dive in. So the problem statement is, you're given an integer array coins representing coins of different denominations on an integer amount, representing a total amount of money. Return the fewest number of coins that you need to make up that amount. If that amount of money cannot be made up by any combination of the coins, return minus one. You may assume that you have infinite number of each kind of coin. So basically what does this question ask us? We have to make the amount from this certain number of coins we have. So we can assume that there are infinite number of that coins, but we have to return the fewest number of coins we require to make up that amount, okay? So in case, if we can't make this amount out of this coins given, we have to return minus one. So this is the question, let's look into the example. So in example one, we have coins given as one, two, five, and the amount is 11. So what is the minimum number of coins we require to make up 11 from these coins? So here in this case, five plus five plus one is 11. So how many coins we require? Three coins, right? So that's why we return three. Since the minimum number of coins we require is three, we return three, okay? In example two, we have coins given as only two, and the amount is three. So this is not feasible, right? So if you take like two plus two, it is four. So that means that we can't make three out of this coin two. So that's why we return minus one, indicating that we can't form this amount from the given coins, okay? In example three, we have one, and the amount is zero. So if the amount is zero, how many number of coins we require to make zero? Zero coins, right? So that's why we output zero. So this is the base case. It's good that they given this example here so that it would give you more idea about the base case here. And what are the constraints here? The coins length is in the enclosure range of one to 12, okay? So what are the coins they give us? That would be an enclosure range of one to 12. So there would be only 12 coins, okay? And the coins of i is in the enclosure range of one to two to the power of 31 minus one. So basically this is the integer range. So here um, each coin is an integer. That's what they're saying, okay? And the amount is the inclusion range of 0 to 10 power 4. Okay, the amount which is the target for us will be the inclusion range of 0 to 10 power 4. Okay, so this is the boilerplate code given. So here we have coin change method which takes coins. Coins is what list of integers and also it takes amount. Amount is the integer and it returns integer. So this integer is what is the fewest number of coins we require to make up the amount they're given. Okay, and if we can't make the amount, we have written minus 1. So it's clear, right? So let's look into the approaches we have. Before we get started, I want to remind you about our exclusive blind info post. This carefully curated collection covers essential coding interview problems to help you master the most common patterns and excel in your interviews. Whether you are prepping for FANG level interviews or just sharpening your problem solving skills, these problems will ensure you are ready for anything. Even if the exact questions aren't asked, they cover all the important patterns. So be sure to check out our playlist and stay ahead of the competition. So let's look into brute force approach. This is basically exhaustive search. So what is the intuition here? This approach involves recursively trying to subtract each coin from the target amount and exploring all possible combinations. So basically, this is not an efficient in for larger inputs. This is just to help you understand the problem's nature. Okay. So firstly, uh, let's consider we have the target amount is 11 and we have a set of coins is 1, 2, 5. And then we try to uh, subtract 1 from it. So we get 10. So from this 10 also, we can subtract 1, 2, 5. So let's go with this path, okay? So 10 minus 5 is what? 5. And then we have 5. Now we have possibility to subtract all these numbers, 1, 2, 5. So we subtract 5. Then 5 minus 5 is equal to 0. That means that uh, we are able to form the 11 from the given set of coins. So how many coins required for this? Here is 1, 1, 1, which is 3 coins only. Now let's explore another path here. So which is 5 minus 2, which is 3 here. Now from this, let's explore this path, which is 5. So 3 minus 5 is minus 2. So that means that we're not able to form the coins. So every path doesn't guarantee that we'll be able to form that particular amount from the given set of coins. So in that cases, we just return the infinity value or like maximum value so that when we check for the minimum value, we can rule out these values, okay? So let's try another case where like we can subtract all ones only. So in that case, we require the 11 coins, but here we get only with three coins, right? So minimum is three. So basically we need to return the minimum number of coins. And in cases where we can't form the amount, we can return the minus one, okay? So let's look at the algorithm. So basically this is what we just discussed, but in form of steps. So first step is to try subtracting each coin from the target amount recursively to explore all possible paths. The next step, if the remaining amount becomes zero, it means a valid combination of 
coin was found return the number of coins used we just discussed here right so here uh, we formed 11 using three coins so we return three so step three if the amount becomes negative this path is invalid so return a large value infinity so here we saw in this case right three minus five is minus two it means that we can't form the amount with the set of possible combinations we took so that case we return the infinity value to indicate that we can't form this okay so in step four among all the valid paths return the minimum number of coins required so this way we can rule out the path which can't make our coins like this okay we we return the infinite value so minimum of infinite and three is what three only so we'll get only three okay so let's look into code so this code uh, we use the helper function which takes the remaining so remaining is nothing but the how much amount is it to make okay so this function basically deals with exploring all possible pause by subtracting each coin from the target amount okay so if the remaining is zero that means that uh, our amount is formed right in in that case we return zero this is to indicate that no more coins are needed okay so if remaining is less than zero as we seen in the case in this case we had to return infinity because this is an invalid path okay i told you right why we had to return infinity because this will help us rule out this path okay so after this base cases we have to go to the actual solution so firstly uh, we do have this minimum coins in slice to float of infinity which is the infinite value this is a larger value this we do because this will help us uh, to get the minimum number easily while doing a comparison using the min function we have and then as we discussed for each coin we calculate the minimum number of coins required so basically uh, we trade to the coins and then we subtract the coin from the remaining amount so firstly uh, when at the initial stage this remaining is what are the amount it given to us that is 11 in that case from 11 as we just explored here we explore the same in code so here we subtract each coin from the remaining okay and then uh, this would be storing the result so after that result what we need to do we have to get the minimum amount of min coins and result plus one why plus one because here uh, we get the minimum number of coins required for remaining minus coin and then if you need to make it for the total remaining coins we require one more coin right so that's why it's plus one guys so here this is just a lesser value and then if we need to make it for the total remaining amount that means that we require plus one coin so that is we are using one more coin here that's why it is plus one hope you got the idea I just repeated it to get your more clarity so at the end we just return the minimum coins in this helper function okay wherein we declaring the result variable and then uh, we're getting the result from the helper of amount that means that we just pass in the initial amount given to the helper function okay and then this will return as a result okay so at the end we return the result if result is not equals to float of infinity else minus one so basically what it means is we are checking if result is not equal to float infinity this is for the cases where we can't make out the amount from the given coins so if we can't make out the amount from the given coins we'll return the infinity right so for that infinity cases uh, we can't return the uh, infinity from this uh, method okay this method has to return the integer which is uh, minus one or the total number of coins which are minimum coins okay so in our case when uh, we get uh, infinity from this we return the minus one so this is that check basically so here you see that this is a ternary operation okay so basically this means that whenever we get a uh, infinity value from this helper function we return the minus one so in the cases where we don't get the infinity value we return the result as is okay so let's look into complexities the time complex is o of 2 power n wherein is the target amount you're trying to make so here why 2 power n because each kind can be either included or excluded leading to the exponential combinations so basically guys for each kind we have two decisions to make right so the two decisions like uh, for total number of coins are n so we have to repeat these two decisions for n number of coins so that's why it's 2 power n and the space complex is o of n this is the space complexity due to the recursion stack okay so basically our recursion stack would grow till the target amount we have right so that's why we have this o of n okay so i got the code ready here let me try running this so this accepts solution for three cases let me just submitting this so as we see here this is a time limit exceeded because this is of higher complexity uh, we are doing it for two power n times so this won't scale to the larger inputs so only 15 out of 180 test case pass so that's why we require to optimize this okay so let's look into that optimization so guys let's look into the recursion stack we have here so this is not exact recursion stack it's just a subset of the recursion stack so i just put it a uh, part of it to give you an idea of what's happening here so if you consider uh, for a uh, amount 11 so we have to do for the case for 1 to 5 right so we subtract uh, 1 to 5 and then from each 1 to 5 we explore all 1 to 5 possible combinations again 
while doing so we are calculating the sub problems again and again so for example here we are calling the helper of 9 for what two times and then helper of 8 for what two times and then helper of 5 what two times so this is just like part of it it's not exactly so in this part only we are calling the sub problems again and again and also here if you see helper of 4 is called for three times in this set only okay so what if we store the sub problem result and reuse it again so that way we don't need to compute this again so we can save our time complexity so that's the idea guys so you know right where i'm heading to it's dynamic programming okay so here uh, in our case uh, we formed this uh, using three coins so here we return three okay so basically here uh, from 11 we subtracted one and then from 10 we subtracted five again we subtracted five so this would call helper of zero and then we return three okay this is that uh, happy path case we have so now let's look into the top down approach of dynamic programming so this is basically a memorization approach and here the time complex would be reduced to o of n into k so we'll look into that don't worry so what is the intuition here this top-down approach uses the memoization to store the results of previously computed amounts, thus avoiding the redundant calculation. We just discussed it. So basically, uh, we need something to store our results so that we don't compute them again and again. So this improves efficiency significantly compared to the brute force approach. So that's evident, right? Basically, we don't compute this again and again. That's why this is improving this efficiency. So what is the algorithm here? So firstly, we use a cache to store the results of previously computed amounts to avoid redundant calculations. Okay, for each amount, subtract coins recursively and use the cache to retrieve the stored results. So basically, uh, if you have the value stored in our cache, we just uh, return it right away. We don't need to compute it again. That's the idea. In step three, if the amount becomes negative, we return a larger value, which is infinity, to indicate the invalid path. In step four, we store the minimum number of coins required for each amount in cash to reuse later. So basically guys, it's the same solution we had for the brute force, but just we, it comes with a cache. So here that cache is our uh, hash map. Okay. We can say dictionary here in Python. Okay. So now let's look into code. So it would give more idea here. So basically here we declared our cache, which is a memo. Okay. This is a dictionary or we can call it hash map. Okay. And here uh, we have the same helper function, which takes the remaining. Okay. So firstly, uh, in place of checking directly remaining is equal to zero, what we are checking is if remaining in memo, that means that we already computed for the sub problem remaining. Okay. So in that case, we just written the memo of remaining. Okay. So this is the additional check we have here. And then um, this is the same as previous approach, right? So basically we're checking if remaining is equal to zero, then return zero. And then if remaining is less than zero, we return the float of infinity. We know why. And this is also same as the previous approach. Min is equal to float of infinity. And he, this is also same as the previous approach. What changes? Here we're just caching the result before we return it. So here we're caching memo of remaining is equal to min coins. And then we return the min coins, okay? That means that uh, here uh, we, firstly we're checking in the cache uh, if we have this, computed if it is not in cache we have to compute it again and then we have to store the result before we return it so that's the concept basically it's same code just these two lines added simple right so i just keep in a constructive manner so that uh, you get the idea of the approach to approach okay so now let's look into complexes here the time complex is of n into k where n is the amount and k is the number of coins each state is computed only once so you got the idea right basically we have to compute for n amounts and then uh, here we using the k number of coins using the each coin we have to compute till amount n that means that we are repeating this for the k times for n amount that so that's why it's o of n into k the space complexity here is o of n this is the space used for memoization storage basically here n is the amount as we discussed and for each amount we store it in our storage right so that's why it's o of n okay i got the code ready let me try running this so this accept solution for three cases, let me try submitting this. So guys, this accept solution for all the test cases we have, okay? So now let's explore another approach in dynamic programming, which is bottom up approach. This is basically a tabulation approach, but here also the time complexity will be same. Okay, so here, what is the intuition? The bottom up approach builds a table, okay, that's basically array here, that iteratively computes the minimum number of coins needed for all the amounts from zero to the target amount, okay? We create a DB table, where dp of i holds the minimum number of coins needed to make that amount i. The result will be stored in dp of amount. So basically, uh, there we are computing using the recursion stack, right? So where the recursion stack holds the minimum number of coins required to make that particular amount, okay? And we know that the uh, recursion stack was of length n. So basically, there also we are computing for each amount from 0 to amount, okay? Here also we are doing the same, but we are not using recursion, we are using the iteration. So using the iteration, we are populating our dp array okay so basically this uh, array would also be the size of n where n is the 
amount okay so let's look at the algorithm here so we create a table to store the minimum coins needed for each amount from zero to the amount in step two we install the table with a large infinity for all the amounts except for zero which should be zero because uh, dp of zero is what total number of coins required to make amount zero so which is zero right we just discussed here okay in step three iterate through each coin and update the table for each amount that can be achieved using that coin okay so this basically we're doing this previous approach in this iteration okay so that's why we have to iterate to the each coin and we have to update the table so in step four we return the value stored for the target amount or minus one if it remains unchanged indicating no combination was formed so basically when it remains infinity it means that uh, we don't have any path which makes up to that amount that's why written minus one okay uh, there also we had a check right so here also we have the check to return minus one if the helper function returns infinity right so we have the same check over here as well okay so now let's look into the code so firstly we install our dpra this is basically uh we are installing it to the float of infinity and uh we want it for amount plus one so basically uh what it means is so let me just give a deep dive into this let's say we have a zero right zero and we multiply with two this means that it is giving a list of size two Instead with zero zero. So firstly, we had an empty list here, right? So if we multiply this uh, empty list with constant, this would generate us that much length list with all the values filled to this this one. So that's what we are achieving there. Here we have this float of infinity in a list, right? This is float of infinity, and then here we multiplying this word like let's say two times. So here it is giving us list filled with all the infinity values. Okay. So that's how we get till the amount okay so each uh, amount from zero to amount is initialized with infinity values okay so now next case is the base case zero coins needed for the amount zero so that's why we're filling dp of zero with zero okay we just need to fill the dp table right we know this dp table what it stores it holds a minimum number of coins needed to make amount i so here for making zero the minimum coins requires zero only that's why we fill with zero okay and then we fill the dp array for each coin so for coin in coin and then for amount in range of coin to amount plus one so here we know that this range is exclusive that's why we specify amount plus one to have the amount in our range okay so basically this is how the range function works the end range is exclusive you know right and here uh, the start range is coin so why are we starting with coin only here and not zero because this coin can't make up the uh, amount which is less than its value right so that's why the minimum value should be coin and then from coin we can go till amount that's what the range is here okay so we update the minimum coins needed for the current amount which is dp of amount is equals to min of dp amount comma dp of amount minus coin plus one so this is the same thing we had before right so basically here uh if we look into the previous approach we have it uh min coins is equals to min of min coins comma result plus one so that's what we are doing here so here min coins will be stored in our dp of amount and for the current iteration this is the value so dp of amount minus coin plus one you know why doing plus one right so here this gives us the coins required to make the amount which is amount minus coin and then for making the amount till what we have now we have to do plus coin for that then only amount equal to amount right so basic math amount minus minus coin okay and then we do plus coin then it gives us amount so that's why we're doing plus one okay so at the end here uh we didn't dp of amount if dp of amount is not equals to float of infinity else minus one this is the same check we had before basically we're checking if it was an infinity value then we should return minus one if not we can return the actual value we have stored at a dp of amount okay so dp of amount here stores the total number of minimum coins required to make up to the certain amount okay and then uh, what are the complexes here the time complexes o of nk where n is the amount and k is the number of coins and each state is computed only once so here we see right if you have k coins we have to compute till amount n so that's why it's k into n or we can say o of nk the space complexity here o of n because this is the space equal for the dp table here we insert the dp table of amount n plus one right so if you take n is equals to amount we're doing n plus one but plus one is negligible here so that's why it's o of n here okay so I got the code ready here. Let me try running this. So this is the access solution for three cases. Let me try running this. So this is the access solution for all the cases and also beats almost 87% of users. And that's to wrap and solve the coin change problem using three different approaches. If you found this bag to needs, drop a comment below and share your thoughts. 
Don't forget to like the video, spread the word to your fellow coders, and hit the subscribe button for more in depth coding tutorials. Also, do follow on Instagram for the latest updates. And if you're looking for resources and have doubts to discuss, join our Telegram community. See you in the next one.